read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance if you're sorry. watching the youtube we might be a little delayed sorry if we're, we're podcast still... book will be on there. oh yeah the podcast is on there so if you're sorry about youtube if you're missing half of this episode <laughs> it's because i forgot to hit record i'm sorry but anyways, yeah, I was thinking about that. I can't remember the last time I went to a wedding. Me neither. Like, I'm literally trying to think. When was the last wedding I've been to? I don't know. Me I neither. Mean, like, it's it's been. I it, remember you went to one, like, far away. I went to one in San more, Diego. Yeah. Like, I I'm, thought you had to, like, transfer. I don't know. It seemed mm-hmm. like it was forever away. Yes. I had to go. I went to one in San Diego. That was when Hallie was a year old. So that's been almost seven years ago, six yeah. and a half years ago. It was she, her first birthday was the day after the wedding. So I left after the wedding at midnight, my train left. Um, We were at an island just off the coast of California in Southern California. It it was near, I can't even remember the name of it, the the island we were on. But wherever we went to the wedding, I had to take a train to the airport and then took the red eye home. And then I got home on her birthday. Damn. But yeah, that was the last time. But that was an incredible wedding. It was so much fun. Although I told my my friend that it was her wedding. I said, this wedding gets an A minus and you know why. And it was because they didn't have cake. What? <sighs> they had cheese. You probably would have liked that though. They had wheels of cheese stacked up that looked like a cake. And they said, let's cut the cheese. And I thought that was the worst thing I'd ever heard. <laughs> but there's something I we've talked about it before. There's just there's something, something good about, about a wedding cake. It's got love in it. That's what it is. It's love and happily ever after. You can't buy that. No, you, you have can't. to have it at a wedding. But they yeah. had just so she's from Wales originally. She's from the UK, and they had gone. They had gone home to a friend of ours got that I, I'm friends with in the UK. She had gotten married, and so they had gone to the wedding. And they had had, the bride there had a cheese tower instead of a cake. And they're like, oh, this is so beautiful. We're going to do this at our wedding. And I was like, fuck you. Like, I'm I'm literally, I didn't know this until the reception. I'm in the wedding. And it's, well, not the reception, in the, before the rehearsal. When we're in there. And I'm like, oh, what kind of cake is it going to be tomorrow? And she was like, bad news, it's cheese. And I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I was like, I'm not in this wedding. But, but those cheese things actually are like expensive. It's super expensive. Yes. Yeah, it would probably said, be just as much as a cake. I said, do you know how many cakes you could have bought for what you spent on this fucking cheese? Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. really pretty. And everything was it really? Else, it was pretty looking. Yeah, it was actually really pretty the way they had it designed because they had all these different types of cheeses. Like, mm-hmm. they're all different colors. And it was really, like, decorated pretty. It was cool. And they had, like, flowers and stuff on it. And then they, they had all this, the like. They for, like, a week. I know, right? I was like, who's eating all this fucking... They're probably... Six years later, they're probably still eating this fucking cheese. So... That's terrible. I I would have cleared it out in the first month. (laughs) That's what I said. It's an A minus and she knows why. (laughs) Because everything else about her wedding was absolutely stunning. She did something really cool where we rented our wedding... Our bridesmaids dresses. And it's called like rent the, it was like rent the runway or some, rent a bridesmaid's dress, something like that. But everybody got to, you paid like, it was like 30 or 40 bucks. You rented your bridesmaid's dress. And then once you were done, you sent it back and that, and then like you paid a cleaning fee. Nice. I uh, know. It was like the smartest thing anyone has ever done in the history of bridesmaid's dresses. Cause I've been a bridesmaid. I think I've been a bridesmaid like 10 times. I mean, like, it, there was a point there where everybody, I'm like, I know I'm awesome, but stop, okay? <laughs> stop asking me. To your <laughs> but, I mean, like, I had been in so many and, and never done anything with the dresses. And this was one where it was like, oh, this is really cool. That, that was a good idea. But, um, but, yeah, I think that was that was probably the last one I'd been to. I guess I'm at that age now where... We're oh my friend stop getting married. No, I'm going to get married. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm serious. I do not give a shit anymore. Let's 2022. Let's do it. How many years will that be? I need a calculator. Do it in November 2022. No, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> like like when her wedding is. Oh my god, they would kill me. They would be so upset. 
Hold on. When did I get married? I got married in 2009. So what is, I'm calculating this up. Oh, we should do 13. Lucky 13. That's what it'll be in 2022. Is we'll 13 be married. lucky or bad? I think it's lucky. I like 13. Is it like no 13, 13 floors on hotels or something? Yeah, I know. Isn't that because it's bad? Yeah. I mean, people say it's bad luck, but I think it's like that's the reason it should be good luck because nobody else mm. likes it. All right. I don't know. Fuck it. That's the one we're doing the way. Everybody's invited. You hearing me, guys? <laughs> what day does that fall on? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, uh, now I have to look at the fucking calendar. Hold like, on. It's going to be on a Tuesday. I don't care. <laughs> Everybody get married. Hold <laughs> on. Let's see. Um, shit. How do I, oh, year. Okay. Let me see. No, 2022, April. What day did I get married? Oh, it is a Monday. That's okay. We just have to get married on a Monday. <laughs> it's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> the wedding's going to be the entire weekend. And it's just so I can wear a pink wedding dress. That's absolutely going to happen. I mean, if I'm doing it again, fuck it. Why not? We'll see that. We're going to make it this podcast about my wedding from here on out. Mm -hmm. I have a note on here. I watched a show or a movie um, last weekend, and it's called I Care A Lot. Have you seen that on Netflix? Mm -mm. You need to watch it. Did you remember the um, the book Gone Girl? Yeah. That was like the movie they did with Ben Affleck and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the girl that's in that is in this. And she plays such a sinister character. Like, there is something about her. I can't remember what her name is. But somehow she plays someone that gives me chills. Like, when she plays, when she's an actress. So, anyway, so in this movie, I care a lot. <clears throat> this woman, she um, is a legal guardian uh, for the courts. So, if there's an elderly person that can't take care of themselves... And they don't have any other family members that are fit to take care of them. Even if they have family members, but maybe they're not capable of taking care of this elderly person. The courts will appoint her as a legal guardian. And what she does from there, she gets them into a care facility, liquidates their assets, and then basically sets them up to, you know, stay there until the end of their life. So, <clears throat> so what she does is that she's a terrible person. She, she does this with people who are totally fine, but she's in cahoots with a doctor that will give them like a oh, psychiatric yeah. evaluation. It is fucked up, but it's so good. The cast is amazing. It's kind of fast paced when it happens. She is such a bitch. And the whole time you're like, I want her to fucking eat it. I don't want her to win. And then like these awesome things happen in it. And you're like, oh shit, maybe I do want her to win. Like, it's like you get so conflicted about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And she says it on there. She's like, I work within the parameters of the law. And they're like, oh, well, it's not ethical. And she's like, I like money. Fuck you. And <laughs> like, it's so good. Mm -hmm. But I've seen it all over like Netflix and stuff. And so I didn't know if you'd watched it yet, but you definitely should if you haven't. No, I've been obsessed with the Discovery Plus app. I've been like all over that. What's all over that? What do you watch on the Discovery Plus app? Remember your dad said he was getting Max? He had to mm. get it? So all like they have a ton of stuff for uh, the 90 Day Fiance. They have older shows. I watched yep. the Thousand Pound Sisters. Oh, my God. I saw a clip of them on Facebook. Is that Didn't one of them just have a baby or something? Uh-huh. How? Oh, she got her surgery and she lost a bunch of weight. Not enough, but enough to get pregnant. Oh my God. So Which it was you're the not one really that... supposed to do so soon after her <laughs> surgery like that. But yeah, she had it. A... Oh my I didn't God. Think... There's two seasons. It's in the middle of the second season. Uh -huh. And I watch it every Monday. I get to watch it. I think mm -hmm. it records on Sunday, but it comes on the app oh, okay. on Monday. Like I watched it today. But, uh, they're funny. And it's like, sometimes it's stupid humor, like fart jokes and stuff. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't with you girls. Okay. I, I just, I saw this thing where she had talked. It was like, uh, it was on Facebook. It was like a short video of an episode where it talked about like they, like one of them lost enough weight to get the surgery or get whatever. She, one of them, one of the sisters lost a ton of weight, but the other one, did and then she put it back on. Yeah, put all and that, of it back on. 
And it was just so sad. Like you could see like the, the defeat in her, you know, and it, Oh man. Do it's you, sad, but you know, I get mad. I get frustrated with her. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm just like, Oh, come on. Yeah. You like just have to up. do this for a month. Mm -hmm. Cause I want her to get it. I'm like, just buckle up and do it for one month. Lose yeah. To get your life right. You want to see him succeed. Yeah. You know, but do you ever watch that and then eat a bunch of junk food and feel better about yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, what do you I do? Actually, when I watch that show and 600 pound life, I get hungry. <laughs> all this food and talking about food. I'm like, You're like, I'm not as bad they as were them. <laughs> 600 pound life the other day. I got Cheetos today because I didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but how is it when you watch hoarders? Does it make you want to be lazy or do you feel like you need to clean your house? <laughs> uh, I don't watch too much. Hoarders. Like if I can't find nothing, nothing, mm -hmm. I'll put on an episode, but it kind of creeps me out. It does make me sad. I need a certain kind of hoarders. Like that, I think that's why I'm obsessed with those cleaning videos from the Amarosa cleaning that I was talking about on Instagram. I love those because it's like they take something really dirty and make it look nice. I want to see a clean hoarder house oh like organized hoarding mm -hmm. that would be my house come on over <laughs> actually no i don't have a lot of hoarding in my closets maybe but yeah. not like sitting but out i would just be curious to see somebody mm -hmm. who hoards but everything is like stacked up and it's clean oh and that'd be like obsessive counter. compulsive or something yeah. yeah but um i don't know so how is the speaking of hoarding how's the dumpster going at your house tell me all about it it's going good. It was nice to clean out my closet. I got all my old clothes out. And then the main reason we got the dumpster was because my hut or my son had this huge bunk bed in his room. Uh -huh. It was just too big. He never used the top. The bottom was like a full. And we actually, when we, I was going to buy him a new bed, but when my husband started breaking it down, the top is actually its own bed. Oh. So it came off and he just put it down. So it was nice, but his room looks three times bigger. I bet it does. So was it like the bottom was a full and the top was a twin? Yeah, the top was a twin. The bottom was like a full. Oh, okay, okay. I've seen those, like the bunk beds that are like that. Yeah. I've been doing, I had to do sneaky trips into his room. <laughs> because my kid is obsessed with stuffed animals, even mm -hmm. still to yeah. this day. He just loves them. So I went through and I was like, I think I filled up two bags of stuffed animals and he still has probably four. Oh I my could have done. God. But I just went through and I threw out the ones you got at like the airport, the grocery store and kept yeah. all the ones that are like actual have like names. Nice ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that was nice. It was nice <sighs> to just organize, even just going through my office and I got a hamper bag or uh -huh. laundry bag and I would just throw as I would go through stuff and then Rob would take it out and dump it. Oh, like that's nice. Cabinets, and I'd be like, okay, drop. Mm -hmm. Did you have to repaint your office? No, they wanted to. They were going to. It was supposed to. And I was like, I'm not repainting my office. Because yeah. right now, um, my husband's office is usually downstairs. But his uh -huh. nephew has been staying down there. And he's not quarantining. So Rob moved his office up into mine. Mm -hmm. And we're like two cramped people in my office. We're bumping the walls and stuff like that. I'm like. No, when I go to repaint this, I'm going to redo the office. Like That's a good altogether. idea. Yeah. So, just waiting. I kind of felt like that when I redid my daughter's room. Like, it was nice because I was like, you know, sort of like take everything out of the mm -hmm. room, go through all of it, repaint, you know. And like, I touched up like baseboards and stuff and clean stuff that hadn't been cleaned. And it was just nice to like go through and really like make it fresh and stuff. Yeah. And I thought about that. I was like, I don't even know if I redid my office. There's not much I could do to redo it. I could repaint it. But like my desk is, I mean, like I'm never changing that because it's exactly how I want it. And like, I'm, a, I'm so obsessive with the way that is. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's just being a writer or maybe that's just having my own office. I don't know. But I like things a certain way on my desk <laughs> in order to work. So I haven't even been using my office though. I don't know. Where do you why. write I now? I don't think I've wrote in my office mm -hmm. in over a month. Where do you write? During the day, if I'm writing, I set when I wake up, I go downstairs to the couch. And then mm -hmm. when the sun goes down, I go up to my room. 
You're not writing in bed again, are you? Mm -hmm. But hey, I've been sleeping Stop great. It. Well, that's good. Okay. But I've been sleeping great since I don't have TikTok anymore. I don't even, <laughs> think, I don't even think sometimes that it's the uh, you're staying up late. I think mm -hmm. that that fast speed, quick stuff, like. Uh -huh. It just keeps your attention. It's I like a know. casino. It really is. It's like a casino. Where it's yeah. just like they know exactly how to keep you interested. And it's like, like you say, those quick, succinct like videos where it's like as soon as you start to be tired, something else pops up to grab your attention. Yeah. And like, you know, if you wake up and you can't sleep, like that's the you're easiest like, thing to do. For a little bit and then you're up mm -hmm. for an hour. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's like I've really tried. So I, I thought, you know, today's March 1st. And I was like, you know, what can I do to sort of combat like all these feelings of like, you know, self-doubt and worry and about, you know, what's the worst part of social media is how I think it makes you feel. And so, oh, hold on. My cat's going to come up here and talk with everybody. Hello. But, um, you know, I think that's one of the worst things about it is, uh, is, is seeing every, how everybody else lives and seeing everybody else's highlight reel. And sometimes it can feel like, I don't know, like it, you're not, you're not living your life or you're not doing enough or whatever, for whatever reason. So I was like, you know, how can I sort of limit this? And I was like, what if I only do social media when I'm in my office and that's it. And I was like, what yeah. if I just really try to like, cause we still have to do it for work. Like, it, it, you know, we have to post up our new releases. We have to post up our books, like, you know, the podcast stuff that we want to do, you know, we have to be able to share that, but it's like, yeah, but I also don't need to like the first thing I do when I wake up, I don't need to scroll Instagram or scroll Facebook because I don't ever feel, I don't ever close that app and feel better about myself. Let me say that. Like a one post might be like, oh, that's awesome. That makes me feel really good. And then 30 posts after that, I'm like, well, I need to lose weight. And like, you know, like, like the, I'm just, I just you make that thing from tasty. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> okay, so I'll never be JLo. Like I'll never be 60 years old and have her body. <laughs> like, so, like, I'll okay. never be 20 and have her body. I know. <laughs> At any age. Oh my God. Like, it's just I'm like, well, that's not reality. <laughs> like, I don't know what planet she's on, but it's not mine. So, yeah, so I just thought, well, okay, that's something good I can do is, is try something like that. So I just thought, you know, it's a good opportunity. I'm only reading the books I have. I'm not buying new books. <laughs> and I am trying to maintain sanity that way. Although there's like 10 other books I want right now. That's the problem. Especially after Lauren Smith. Segue into Lauren Smith. <laughs> so we're here with the second half of her book, Hush, this week. That is the stepbrother book. You guys got the first installment on Tuesday. If you're just listening today, go back and listen to Tuesday's episode. Um, like I mentioned last week, or uh, sorry, on Tuesday, um, Lauren said that she wants to talk about um, her newest release, Tempting Prince Charming. Um, it's a sexy contemporary romance that is, has the full and ugly cry happily ever after because it's about a real estate mogul who falls for a single widowed mother and literally takes her to a Disney world to stay in the Cinderella castle suites as one of their dates It's straight up fairy tale. I love it. It's that super cute and adorable. Funny. Also super steamy. Um, so that's out right now. You can go grab it. And also um, the second book she has uh, that she wants to mention is dark desire, which comes out in late April. And that one's also contemporary with a uh, light BDSM and a young woman with a painful past puts her in front of a Russian bad boy with dark secrets and dark desires. So that's dark desires. It comes out at the end of April. Be sure and check that out. And then this week, her giveaway, she's giving away five signed print copies of Tempting Prince Charming. So she's doing five winners on that, which I thought was really awesome. So All right. we'll let you listen to the second installment and then we'll see you on the other side and tell you who's going to be here next week. See Bye. you on the other side. Chapter four. The Power Outage Incident The next two weeks passed pleasantly for Russell. After the first roller coaster day they spent together, he and Henley found an easy and fun rhythm. They'd eat breakfast every morning and talk about safe things, like the herb garden she'd started in the back or a show they'd watched. Then they'd separate for the morning, she to her summer classes and he to his medical journals. He often lingered near her. He couldn't help it. 
but their interactions managed to stay away from any hint of sex. The time they spent together was nice. Nice wasn't adequate. Truly, Russell felt for the first time like he was home. His parents had divorced when he was only 10, and he'd been bouncing between houses for years. When his father had gotten remarried to Henley's mom, he'd already been at college, so home still wasn't very defined. Now here he was, finally feeling like he belonged, like this was his place, and it had everything to do with Henley. She stood in the kitchen, humming as she stirred a pasta sauce on the stove and added some of the fresh rosemary and crushed basil from the herbs she'd bought at the farmer's market. There was something homey and intimate about watching Henley cook. Most nights in the last two weeks, they'd stood side by side in the kitchen, talking and laughing as they prepared a meal together. He felt like this was the missing piece all these years, and he hated thinking he would lose all of this in just over a week when he left for Kansas City. You need any help? He asked her. Russell was leaning against the counter by the fridge, watching her pert bottom sway as she hummed. Nope, I got it. It's actually not a complicated recipe, which is good because I'm not the best cook. You're not the worst either, he teased. She shot him a withering look over her shoulder. Hush, or you won't be eating tonight. What, it was a compliment, he insisted, and gazed back at her in feigned innocence. You can set the table. He pointed her spatula toward the kitchen table. Yes, ma'am, he saluted her. How did you get through medical school being such a smartass, she asked. By my sheer brilliance, of course. She rolled her eyes but smiled at him. It was such a soft expression, sweet and strangely intimate. After they'd eaten dinner, they washed the dishes and loaded them in the dishwasher. While they worked, Russell put on music. Soon, Henley was singing, using a fork as a microphone. Damn, she was adorable. He wanted to grab her, set her on the counter so her mouth was level with his, and take his time kissing her until they both forgot to breathe. You don't sing? She asked him. No, he laughed. But I do dance. He gripped her hips and pulled her away from the dishwasher. A new song started, an oldie from the 60s. You ever seen Dirty Dancing? He asked as he pulled her back against him. With Patrick Swayze? Who hasn't? Her hand settled on his hips. Russell began to roll his body, swaying against her, encouraging her to move with him. He'd learned ages ago that dancing was one of the best ways to a girl's heart. Dance with her, and it showed attraction and excitement. Almost like sex, but with none of the potential consequences. He had a girlfriend once tell them that dancing was sort of a practice round from the bedroom, at least for her. If a man could dance well, he could make love well. Like this? Henley spun in his arms and raised one of her legs, wrapping it around his hips so their bodies met. Except this time they were facing one another. Russell sucked in a breath as his whole body went rigid. She was going to kill him. He dug his fingers into her hips before sliding his palms around to cup her ass. He clenched her hard and they rocked and swayed. All but had sex there in the kitchen, listening to Sam Cook singing Twisting the Night Away. Henley gazed up at him, her eyes soft and dreamy, and he knew in that moment he didn't want to let her go, not now, not ever. But he couldn't have her for a multitude of reasons. As the song ended, they stopped dancing, but stayed motionless with their bodies pressed close, staring at one another. Henley's cheeks were flushed with color, and she was smiling. She had no idea how close she'd come to being spun around, bent over, and fucked until they both screamed of pleasure. She was making him lose his mind. Carnal thoughts were plaguing him. And he feared if he didn't take a step back, he would lose control. Neither of them could afford that. I'll finish the dishes. He moved past her and continued loading up the dishwasher. Russell, whatever Henley was about to say was forgotten as the power in the house died and they were surrounded in darkness. What the hell? Russell closed the dishwasher while he let his eyes adjust to the change in lighting. What happened? 
Henley moved out of the kitchen toward the front of the house. Did the neighbors lose power too? He followed her to the wide windows of the living room that faced the street. All of the other houses on the block visible from the window were pitch black. It's not just us. Russell put a hand on Henley's hip as he came up behind her. How long do you think it would be out? We have a ton of food in the freezer and the fridge, she said. My guess is probably the rest of the night. Damn, it's gonna get really hot, Henley groaned. You're right. Let's take the ice out of the freezer so it won't melt and ruin the fridge. Plus, we can use it to cool off. A brilliant idea sparked to life as he saw the moonlight rippling off the dark pool water in the backyard. Henley, put on your swimsuit and meet me outside in five minutes. What? Why? she asked, arching one brow at him. Just trust me. He gave her hip a squeeze, then left to change into his own swimsuit. This was going to be perfect. Henley had no idea what Russell was up to, but she changed into her favorite red bikini, pulled a cover-up on, and came downstairs. The pale white glow of the moonlight on the pool lured her outside. Russell? She called out when she didn't immediately see him. In here, he emerged from the pool house interior. He was wearing his swim trunks and held the bucket of ice from the fridge. He marched over to the edge of the pool and tipped the bucket over. Ice splashed into the pool. How about a good old-fashioned ice bath to cool us down? She laughed. Russell, the ice cubes won't last very long, and the pool is huge. He shrugged. It's just for fun. Come on, hen. He teased. Before she could stop him, he grabbed her by the waist and tossed her in the water. She couldn't help the scream that left her mouth a second before she dove beneath the surface. When she came up, she spewed pool water out like a fountain and wiped even more water out of her eyes. Russell stood at the edge of the pool with his arms crossed over his muscled chest as he grinned down at her. You ass! She splashed water at him. Rather than leap back, he launched over her head and exploded into the pool with a cannonball. With a shriek of laughter, she dove under the water and her wrap came loose. She retrieved it and tossed it to the side of the pool in a wet heap before she swam toward Russell, who'd just popped up to the surface. He flicked his hair back from his face and winked at her. The water was dark around them, and it only heightened the tension. Cooling off yet? He asked her. Yeah. That was a total lie. If anything, she was starting to burn hot. He moved toward her in the water, and she instinctively moved away from him into the shallow end of the pool. Something. Something was going to happen, and it scared her. Not because she didn't want it, but because she did want it so much. When it was over, what would they go back to? The uncertainty made her hesitate, at least until the split second before he caught her hips under the water. Russell spun her to face him as they both stood waist deep in the shallows. You're always running away from me, he murmured. Why? His fingers played with the ties on her bikini bottom. Fire erupted over every inch of her skin as he touched her with those deft yet playful fingers. Because you always leave. If I don't run away myself, you'll just leave me again. She couldn't believe she'd said that. She would just bared herself completely to him on an emotional level. And she had no idea what he was going to do. I never meant to leave. I was 19. I couldn't stay, not then, he whispered. His tone was so gentle, with a hint of husky seduction that was coaxing her into moonlit enchantment. Will you stay now? Her voice trembled as he began to slowly lean in. He didn't answer with words. Instead, he kissed her. Stars above seemed to wink out, but as Henley opened her mouth to his, they surged back to life again. Russell tasted good, too good. A hint of something dark and hot mixed with the best dirty kissing she'd ever had. The man kissed like he wanted to get slapped. His hands held her hips for a long while as they kissed. Before he explored her bare back and down to the curve of her bottom. She shivered and pressed closer, knowing full well that any second, 
he could slide her swimsuit off and leave her vulnerable to him in every way. He sucked on her tongue and nibbled her bottom lip before diving back in for another kiss that sent wild chills over her body like she'd never felt before with any other man. Her raw desire for him filled her with sudden embarrassment. But instantly, he made her forget everything but him. Forget everything but how good her body felt in this moment. He backed them into the deep end of the pool so that she had to wrap her legs around his waist to stay afloat. That's it, babe, hold me, he murmured in that dark, husky voice that sent an almost violent hunger through her for every fantasy she'd ever had about him. He pinned her against the side of the pool, rocking his hips against hers, pressing his aroused body into her own. Henley was seconds away from demanding he jerk his swim trunks down. So fucking beautiful, Henley, Russell said. You know that, right? He murmured before he nipped her throat and she groaned. Damn him. He found that perfect spot, the one that when kissed or even better, bitten, drove her insane. She was done thinking any of this through. She just needed him. Damn the consequences. She slid a hand down between their bodies and cupped his shaft. Only the cloth of his swimsuit stood between her palm and his smooth skin. She squeezed gently, then rubbed him hard. Russell let out a string of curses that would have gotten her grounded for a century if she'd been a child. I'm not a kid anymore. Why don't you show me what I've been dreaming about? She had no idea where this inner vixen was coming from. All she knew was that she felt wild and free with Russell. Are you serious, Hen? He asked as he gazed down at her. They were practically fused together by this point. What was a few less articles of clothing and a little more touching? Dead serious, Russell. She moved her hands up to his shoulders and dug her nails into his skin ever so slightly. Don't be gentle either, not now. The moonlight reflecting off his blue eyes made him dark and dangerous in a way she'd only ever fantasized about before. She was going all in. She wasn't going to have any regrets. He bent his head to her, seeking a softer kiss, but it held the promise of everything to come. Then he looked down at her again. I'll need a condom. She shook her head. Don't need one. I'm on the pill and clean. Are you? He nodded that fire burning hot in his eyes. Fuck, the idea of riding you bare. Mm, it's got me so hard. I don't know if I can walk out of the pool. Then don't. Let's do it right here. She rocked her hips against his once more. But I want to taste every damn inch of you. I want to next time. This time just fuck me hard and fast, she ordered. I love it when you get bossy, Hen. He smiled at her but I'm in charge now. And he was, holy shit, he was. In one swift move, he'd ripped his trunks down and pulled her bikini top and bottoms off. His hands roamed roughly over her, mapping her like a foreign country he was soon to conquer. She hissed out a breath as he lifted her up and captured her nipple in his mouth, sucking hard. His fingers delved between her thighs, sliding into her. His touch was gentle at first, sinking into her slowly, but she moved her hips toward him, pushing his fingers deep so he could feel she was ready. He released her breast with a sudden pop of his lips and kissed his way back up her body. You're so wet everywhere. He teased her ear with small flicks of his tongue. Russell, she warned. Stop teasing me, he chuckled. It's one of my new favorite things, teasing you. He met her gaze again, but this time she could tell he was done teasing, done waiting. She opened her legs wider, canting her hips, and he began to slide into her. He was thick and long, and he stretched her almost to the point of pain. She just needed him inside her all the way, now. She sank her teeth lightly into his shoulder, and he surged upward in one hard thrust so deep that she could barely breathe. Oh, God, Russell, she moaned against his shoulder as he withdrew and pumped back in. He was so hot and hard, 
like a piece of iron searing her insides. He fucked her without mercy, just as she'd craved. There was no shame, no embarrassment, just pure lust. An animal need to connect, to forge a new single creature from the pairing of two. He gripped her hair, pulling her head back so he could kiss her. But their movements were so frantic with his hips pumping so fast that he simply watched her with hooded eyes. Her lips parted as she panted for breath, and her breasts rubbed against his smooth chest. Suddenly, he pulled out of her. Hey, don't stop, she protested. But he turned her around so she could brace herself on the lip of the pool. Any further complaints stopped. When he pulled her bottom up and parted her legs before he thrust into her from behind. I had to watch you shake this cute little ass in front of me for two weeks. Now I want to pound against it until neither of us can walk, he growled softly, before he began to do just that, pound her like an animal possessed. The new angle of penetration made her whimper with building pleasure. She'd never had sex like this before. It was rough and dirty. Oh, God. The climax hit her before she could control herself, and she screamed his name. He didn't let up, kept pumping himself into her, owning her, claiming her, marking her inside and out with a passion that she would never forget as long as she lived. A sudden burst of heat filled her, and he gripped her tight enough to leave bruises before he relaxed against her from behind. For a long moment, they stayed together, still hot and gasping. Holy shit, hen. Are you okay? Russell asked. Yeah, but you might need to carry me out of here. She laughed as she said it, but she wasn't kidding. Okay, I can do that. He pressed a kiss to her shoulder and stayed inside her a moment longer. His hips rocked once or twice as though he didn't want to pull out. His final two thrusts created delicious little aftershocks that made her whole body shudder with the last flood of pleasure. So, on a scale of one to ten, how do I compare to all your other girls? Henley asked, trying to tease him. Now that she'd just let him fuck her senseless, she felt a desperate need to reclaim herself, to put distance between them. There haven't been a lot of other girls, he said, still holding her in his arms. A few, yes. But you? He didn't finish. He simply kissed her cheek and then separated their bodies. Stay there he said before he swam away and retrieved their swimsuits from where they'd landed nearby. When he resurfaced, he handed her the two pieces of her bikini and pulled on his swim trunks. I'll grab some towels. He moved to the steps of the shallow end of the pool and climbed out before vanishing inside the pool house, leaving her alone to wonder how it would be between them now. Please don't let this be a huge mistake. Russell collected two fluffy towels from the bathroom inside the pool house and took a minute to catch his breath. Had he really just had sex with Henley? Jesus, he had. His body was still loose, his muscles twitching with the adrenaline that had flooded him shortly after he'd come hard inside her. He'd fucked her like some brandy frat boy when he should have taken his time, shown her all the things he'd mastered over the years when it came to sex and giving women pleasure. But no, he'd lost all control. He dragged a hand through his hair, picked up the towels off the counter again, and returned to the pool. Henley was sitting on the steps, her arms wrapped around her midsection and her swimsuit back on. She looked so vulnerable in that moment, and he knew it was because of what they'd just done. Hey. He joined her and held out the towel, opening it up a little like a curtain as she stood and climbed out of the pool. Then he wrapped the towel around her and rubbed her for warmth. Please tell me you're okay, he said. If she didn't, he was going to panic. Fine. That was just really intense. Her usual brash, playful teasing was gone. She was timid and shy now. He didn't like it. Without a word, Russell gently turned her to face him and pulled her into his arms, simply holding her tight. Yeah, it was but we don't have to let it scare us. Let's just enjoy tonight. We can have a talk in the morning, he said. Talk sounds bad. She wrinkled her nose with clear distaste of that idea. Only if you want it to be. 
Why he said that, he wasn't sure. Right then, if she said she wanted to date, to do the whole relationship thing, he would have said yes. To hell with the consequences and complications. She raised big, beautiful eyes to his, and her lips parted in surprise. Don't think about anything tonight, and I won't either. He repositioned their bodies, put an arm around her shoulders, and let her back inside the house. They parted ways in the upstairs hall, he to his room and she to hers. All these years, she'd been one room away. But he'd needed to let time pass before he could see her as he did now. This gorgeous, sweet, smart woman was only a door away. She was right. He had walked away before. Because the time hadn't been right, but now? Now it couldn't be more clear. Russell changed into a pair of boxers as the heat of the powerless house started to warm him up. He threw open the windows in his bedroom, letting the breeze trickle in. It helped, but only a little. He stood before the open windows and lost himself in thoughts. Russell? He turned to see Henley, wearing only a tank top and those tiny little dark gray cloth shorts in the doorway to his bedroom. Do you mind if I hang out with you tonight? At least until the lights come back on? A sleepover? I'm game. He couldn't resist teasing her again. It was fast becoming his favorite pastime. Henley giggled. God, don't call it that. Well, that's what it is. He walked over to his bed and sat down on one side. She waited half a moment before shuffling softly across the floor and climbing in beside him. His heart beat wildly as she settled in next to him, and after a moment rested one hand on his chest. I missed you, she said quietly. Missed me? She nodded. When mom and I moved in, you were this big protective presence for me while you were here. I hated when you had to go back to school. Then you never came home. He let out a sigh as he heard the hurt in her voice. I wanted to be here. But there was not a second of time when I could make it home. In a few weeks, you'll be gone again. She let out a breath that sounded to him like frustration. Yes, only a short distance away this time. I'll be in Kansas City, but on the weekends. He let that suggestion linger. Whatever this was between them was still too new to start setting expectations. They both needed time to think about what they felt. They needed time to determine if doing something about their insanely hot chemistry meant trying to have a relationship or not. He lay awake a long time, thinking about Henley and about his residency and how he didn't want to choose between them. Chapter 5 The Sleepover Incident Russell stretched and yawned. Something warm and cuddly lay against his body as he opened his eyes. He found Henley practically on top of him, and he was definitely not complaining. He'd gotten up once in the early morning hours to close the windows when he felt the air conditioning kick on and knew the power had returned to the house. With the air in the room cooled down significantly, Henley's body heat didn't bother him at all. He liked her with an easy reach. He curled his arms around her body and she nuzzled his chest with her cheek and sighed, still asleep. The morning light turned her dark hair almost russet with its gold rays. He picked up one long silken tendril and spooled it around his finger, mesmerized. As he lay there, his hands slid down her slender back to the flare of her hips and over the curve of her ass. Last night, he'd had fun, taking her rough and hard. This morning, he wanted to take his time and savor her. He rolled their bodies so she was flat on her back beneath him. He pressed a kiss to her forehead, her closed eyelids, each cheek and finally to her lips. Henley's lashes fluttered open. Morning, he said. For a second, confusion clouded her hazel eyes before they widened. Oh God, Russell, we... She clamped her mouth shut and was suddenly trying to push him off her. He let her escape, and she ran straight for the bathroom. Ignoring the painfully hard erection he'd woken up with, he got out of bed and joined her in the bathroom. She was brushing her teeth frantically. He hid a smile and did the same, albeit without the nervous movements. She stared at him. What? Her eyes strayed to the tent formed in his pants. Oh, that. He chuckled. 
Do whatever you need to do. Then get your adorable ass back in my bed. He swatted her perfect backside as he walked past her and left the bathroom. She closed the door after he'd left, so he lay back down in the bed, wondering if she would actually come back, or if last night was all he'd ever have of her. A few minutes later, the patter of soft feet on the floor made him open his eyes. She was standing at the foot of his bed, staring at him, still hesitant. Get in here, Henley. He patted the bed beside him, and she joined him. He immediately slid her into his arms, kissing her thoroughly until he was quite certain that all thoughts of putting distance between them were obliterated. Now, he said as he stared down at her, let me show you some of my better talents. He pushed up the tank top she wore, bearing two lovely breasts that filled his hands. Her nipples beaded into tight buds. She let out a soft exhalation as he bent his head and flicked his tongue over each peak. He blew softly on them, knowing the cool air would tighten her skin further and heighten her arousal and senses. When he captured one nipple in his mouth, sucking while he gently pinched the other between his thumb and forefinger, Henley's legs twitched around his body, and she moaned deep at the back of her throat. That's it, babe. Tell me what you like, he encouraged. He loved it when a woman made sounds during sex. It didn't have to be screams, but groans, giggles, sighs, moans, and whimpers. All guided him into giving a woman an experience she would never forget. He switched breasts, suckling the other tip while she was fighting to dig her hands in his hair. He gripped her wrists and pinned them on either side of her head. No, no. It's my turn to play with my new toy. He chuckled at her protesting movements, but I wasn't. I know what you need, he promised her. Then he let go of her hands and slid down her body until he was settled right between her spread thighs, with his face inches from her feminine folds glistening with her arousal. His girl loved it when he dominated her just enough to make her hot. He bent his head, flicked the tip of his tongue over her clit, and she nearly shrieked as her hips jerked violently. He had to hold her down to keep her still. Russell smacked the side of her ass. No moving, he ordered. She moaned again, and her thighs opened wider. He licked her slit and found the essence of her excitement nearly intoxicating. Fuck, babe, you're so sweet. He continued to lick her, thrusting his tongue deep into her before lightly teasing her clit. He repeated this over and over until she was mewling and trembling. Please, please, Russell, she begged. I like it when you beg me, Hen. He slid one finger into her, then added a second, lightly penetrating her over and over, but stopping when she got too close to the edge. You asshole. She jerked when he prevented her from coming a third time. Speaking of... Why don't you just fuck me already, she snapped. Unable to resist, he sat back on his heels, rolled her over, and swatted her ass cheeks until they were slightly pink. What did you, oh God, that felt good, she moaned and wriggled on the bed. But this time, he was the one who couldn't stop. He lifted her up onto her hands and knees and spread her thighs to get a gorgeous view of her wet slit. He aligned his body and sank his hard cock into her. His hips smacked against her ass, pounding until she was nearly screaming. Her breasts bounced and he nearly lost his mind as she squeezed his shaft when she came. Finally, he let loose, hammering into her like an animal until he tightened with his own release and his seed filled her. She collapsed to the bed beneath him. He fell down beside her, breathing harshly. Fuck, why can't I take it slow with you? He muttered as she gazed at him, her eyes glassy with pleasure. Because I like it hard and fast, she asked with a suddenly innocent expression. One of these days, he began. Yeah, yeah, she patted his chest patronizingly. Until then, you can just bang the shit out of me. Russell closed his eyes and threw his forearm over his face. This woman was going to kill him, and he knew he would enjoy every second of it.
It was two days later when they were in the shower washing each other, which Henley thoroughly enjoyed, and giggled each time he tried to wipe her down with foamy soap. When they heard the sound of the garage door opening, it vibrated right beneath where they were standing. Henley and Russell both froze. Did you invite someone over? She asked him. No, you? She shook her head. Then who? He began, but his face drained of color. Our parents, she hissed. Oh God, get out. I have to wash the conditioner out of my hair. You go and see if it's them. If Henley hadn't been freaking out, she would have laughed at the sight of big, beautiful, badass Russell, nearly falling on his face as he tried to exit the shower. He threw on a towel and bolted through the door. Henley scrambled to finish her shower and made a sprint for her own room just as Russell was leaving. He'd managed to dress and give her a quick nod as they passed. Henley? Russell? Hal's voice called up the stairs. So their parents were home early. Hey, Dad, how was Europe? Russell's voice was audible a second before Henley shut her bedroom door. She combed through her wet hair, then braided it before she tossed on a pair of jean shorts and a baby blue blouse and bracing herself to meet their parents. Hal and Janine were in the kitchen talking with Russell when she came down. Hey, honey, her mother came to hug her. Hey, mom, Hal, she greeted. Why are you guys back so early? Well, we decided we would have more fun if we spend the summer with the two of you since you're both home. We haven't done that in years. Oh. Henley shot a covert glance at Russell, who was pouring himself a cup of coffee, as if they had not just been having a little too much fun in the shower. Does that sound like fun? Her mother asked. Of course it does. Henley nearly cursed aloud. It wasn't that she wasn't glad to have her mother home, because she was. But now she and Russell might be moving into a very complicated and totally secret relationship. What were they supposed to do? So, Russell said the power went out last night? Yeah, it was only then that Henley noticed it had come back on. You guys had a lot to do while playing house while we were gone. Glad to see you're both still in one piece. Janine chuckled as she sat down in a chair at the kitchen table. Playing house? Henley shot another panicked look at Russell. Did their parents somehow know? Surely not. Or there would be a lot of yelling, right? We held down the fort, Russell said. Well, I've got some work to do. He left the kitchen. Henley stared after him before she decided his strategy was a good one. They would just avoid each other until he left for Kansas City. It was a solid plan. In theory. However, after dinner that night, when she was sitting in her bed, staring at the wall shared with Russell's room, all she wanted to do was go to him. But they couldn't risk it. Not when their parents were one floor below. She reached for a book on her nightstand, but stilled as her door creaked open. Russell, wearing only his blue jeans, stepped into her room. Russ! He hushed her by holding a finger to his lips and smiled wickedly. Without a word, he locked the door and crossed over to her bed. What are you doing? She whispered as he reached her, showing you that nothing's changed. He cupped her face and leaned down to steal a kiss. She melted against him and curled her arms around his neck. We have to go slowly, since we have to be quiet. He bit her bottom lip before he licked away the sting. Okay, you win. She pulled him onto her bed. Slow and quiet, she agreed. It was hard to keep from giggling as he kissed and tickled her while he removed her clothes. When she was naked and he was on top of her, she groaned as he sank slowly into her body. He rode her gently, their bodies gliding against one another. Russell linked their hands and pinned them into the mattress by her head. They made love in almost total silence, except for the soft sighs and tremulous inhalations. As they reached their peak together, Henley felt completely certain of one thing. She'd gone and fallen in love with Russell freaking Rollins. As the night wore on, Russell looked at Henley in bed beside him. He watched the moonlight play upon the oceanscape art in her bedroom. Henley, he whispered. Yeah? She snuggled closer and his chest filled with a dizzying warmth. Want to go out with me? He asked. 
What? She lifted her head, blinking bleary-eyed at him. Date me. Be my girlfriend. Are you serious? She propped her chin in her hands and gazed at him. He reached out and brushed his fingertips over her bare shoulder closest to him. She was so beautiful, and he couldn't imagine not seeing where things could go. His Henley was fiery, smart, and bold. He didn't want to walk away, not this time. I'm serious. Be my girlfriend. No girl, space, friend? She asked, with a hint of mischief in her eyes. No space, he clarified. So will you? I want to, but what about our parents? She asked. We only have to survive another week, then I leave for Kansas City. You can come visit me. I'll have my own place, and we'll have plenty of alone time. Henley licked her lips. What about your work? Will you be too busy for a relationship while doing your residency? He shook his head. No, not for you. I'm not going to walk away from you again, Hen. You're my girl. I want this to work. I'll be on a week-on, week-off rotation. We can talk on the phone during the weeks I'm on. And we can visit each other the weeks I'm off. Henley was silent a long moment. You promise not to break my heart? Only if you promise not to break mine, he said. She held out her hand, one pinky extended. An image of her doing that as a little girl, long before he met her, suddenly flashed into his head. Without a second thought, he linked his pinky with hers and gave it a solemn shake before he pulled her up his body and captured her lips with his. They heard footsteps on the stairs as their parents headed to the master bedroom at the opposite end of the hall. Russell hushed her again when she started to giggle. This was going to be fun and a little dangerous. All they had to do was not get caught. Epilogue. The cake incident. Three years later. You look lovely, honey. Janine smoothed the veil down the back of Henley's loose updo. You really think so? Henley eyed her appearance critically. She was getting married in a few minutes. She and her mother were hiding in the antechamber that led to the main hall where the ceremony was. Her maid of honor and bridesmaids had already left the room in a flurry of flowers and giggles. But it was thoughts of her future husband that held Henley's focus. She thought back to how much she'd changed in the last three years and how different her life was from what she thought it would be before she'd spent that summer month alone with Russell. She thought of how she'd graduated college just six weeks ago and had started working at an architecture firm in Kansas City. All her dreams were within reach, even marriage, which she hadn't really given much thought to. Organ music suddenly began to play outside the room. Oh, there's the music. We need to get out there. I wish your father was here, her mother said, her eyes a little teary. He'd be so proud of you. Me too. But Hal is here to walk me down the aisle. The only other person she would have asked to handle the honor if Hal couldn't have would have been Russell. But he couldn't. Her mother led the way to the hall, arm in arm. Once at a stop, Henley lined up with her bridesmaids as she watched one of the groomsmen escort her mother to a seat in front. So this was it, her wedding. Henley smoothed her dress and her maid of honor winked at her before she, too, walked down the aisle. Henley couldn't help but wonder what Russell would think of her now. She definitely wasn't a kid anymore. She'd grown up and was getting married. He would have something to say about that for sure, he'd tease her. She stepped into the aisle with her bouquet in hand and walked toward the man she was to marry and begin her life with. When she reached the altar and joined hands with her fiancé, she saw a twinkle in his eyes. God, she adored him. She'd been so lucky to find him. We are gathered here today, the priest began to speak. Her fiancé squeezed her hand gently. I was a little worried you'd ditch me, her fiancé said under his breath. Shut up, jerk, I'm here, aren't I? She shot back in a whisper. Russell bit his lip to keep from laughing. The priest eyed them and raised a brow. Henley bashfully ducked her head, but not before she smirked a secretly little smile at Russell. The ceremony was beautiful and exactly as expected. They said their vows, kissed, 
and walked together past the crowd of friends and family toward the reception. Did I tell you how incredible you look? He murmured in her ear. No, you didn't. I'm all ears. She giggled as he pulled her into an alcove alone for a brief moment. Well, you look all grown up and cute. I'm still cute, aren't I? She asked with a mock solemnity. You're beautiful, Hen. You always will be. Hush and kiss me. She pulled him into her. It was quite a bit later before they joined everyone at the reception. She walked over to Hal and her mother, who were waiting with the photographer for the cake cutting. Henley was careful to give Russell a little piece. But right when he would have eaten it, she smeared a dollop of icing onto his nose. He immediately retaliated in the same fashion, and they were kissing and nibbling on bits of cake while laughing, much to the amusement of the crowd. When Henley had a minute to stand beside her mother, she spoke. Mom, I was always surprised you never got upset when Russell and I told you about our engagement. I thought you'd be freaked out that he and I were even dating. Her mother burst out laughing. What? she demanded, as Russell and Hal joined them. Oh, honey. The reason we weren't upset was because we knew that before that summer you two weren't in love. Nothing inappropriate had ever happened between you two. We weren't worried. It was only when we got back that day from our trip, we realized that you two had reconnected as adults, and something had developed between you. Wait, how could you have known? Russell demanded. We were quiet. We never let you see us together. Hal's eyes twinkled. You forget, Russell. The floorboards creak. We heard every sound you two ever made that summer. Henley's face exploded with heat. Oh, my God. She glanced at Russell, who simply lifted a finger to his lips, reminding her of all the times in the last three years they'd thought they'd been quiet and careful. She burst out laughing, and so did he. So much for thinking they could keep this thing between them hushed. This has been Hushed by Jay Smith, read for you by Ramona Master. Welcome back. Hi. So, as I told always, you. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. As, as, as always, everything we mentioned will be in the show notes along with the new releases. It should be mm-hmm. up to date with everything this week. And what else you got? Uh, up next week, we have on Reading Me Romance, we have Dylan Allen. We are playing a previously released audiobook from her. Um, it's called Between Us and Forever. Um, I believe it's season two. Maybe she was on with us. It was pretty much right in the beginning. I think it's still, it was one of the five episode um, when we still did five episodes a week and we were crazy. So we're going to condense it down to two and we're going to re-record the beginning of it, but we're going to replay that for those of you who haven't gone back and listened in the beginning. So we're really excited to have her back. Dylan Allen has got, um, she recovered a bunch of books. She sent me some print copies and stuff for giveaways it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited to see them and do all that good stuff. So we'll tell you more about that next week and what she's got coming up. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance.